Let me Joy know. has a question. I customized my SharePoint list using Power Apps. However, a user was asked for a free trial to view the form. Do end users need a license to view the form? End users will not create an app, so I don't understand why Power Apps is asking for a license. Bum, bum, bum. This is, I, I, <laughs> I actually had to think twice about this one because your, your first answer is if you create something that has a certain license, then you probably need the same license to consume it. Right. But this is this is SharePoint. And I thought the one deal with Power Apps in SharePoint, <clears throat> excuse me, is that you would never need an elevated license to use Power Apps on a SharePoint list. Like that's just part of the value proposition when they retired InfoPath and all those other things. So I was a little confused by this. So I'm not sure what would have been creating that prompt to get a, a license. It, it, it is sure? a true statement. So Power Apps, so if you use um, any of the Power features, so Power Apps or Power Automate within the M365 ecosystem, it is included in your license if it's an M365 license. Um, however, there's this fun little thing that happens occasionally is if for whatever reason on the back end, the user is not credentialed against something for Power Platform, and that depends on how it's configured in the Power Platform Administration Center. So in the Power Platform Administration Center, you can basically define whether or not users can interact with Power Apps and Power Automate, and whether or not, like how it's set up, whether they can use the free, like um, per, you know, per usage stuff. Yeah. And so there's like, there's these kind of check gates that it goes through to look to see, has this person been flagged as somebody who can or cannot use something? If that's never been set up, what ends up happening is that the system decides to ask the question itself. And basically what happens is it prompts you for a license, not because it truly needs a license, but because it doesn't know whether you're supposed to be licensed or not. Hmm. So I've seen this happen. I don't, I, it, it, it kind of seems to come and go. So I'm not even gonna say it's hundred percent true, but um, I've noticed that if you've never decided at the power admin or at the power app or power automate um, admin center, if they're supposed to be licensed or not, and they've never had any licensing applied to them, then it will force that prompt to basically say, we don't know who you are in our system, click the trial to start it. And when it does that, it applies a license to them because the Power App in M365 is covered under the license, it'll never actually charge them anything for that license. Mm. It's in like theory. the goofiest thing. <laughs> yeah. Is that, and, and Sharon, does that apply to the F-type licenses as well? I was thinking, it, it was like, talk about user, you know, we, we don't know what user is defined, what license type that might be. So for an F-type license, typically you're going to be presenting it like on a mobile device or on a kiosk device. And so mm -hmm. nine times out of 10, you don't see that same thing pop up because they're not accessing the Office 365 environment the same way um i don't i don't do a lot of work with that um, my husband does and he said he's never run into this happening with his f license people um but i have seen it happen and i'm not even going to say frequently but i have seen it happen occasionally with my office people um that are 100 percent licensed for it but because they never made that decision on the back end it forces them the very first time after the very first time they never see it again so what Sharon is saying that if you run into the prompt, click OK on the trial. If you get charged, call her. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the great part is, you know, you say yes to the trial. What's going to end up happening on the back end is it's not going to engage that license because there's no credit card behind it. So you're you're starting that trial, but there's no credit card behind the license to start the trial. So it technically will just age out. The worst case scenario is that that trial license will just kind of go defunct. But the funny thing is, is that you didn't need it in the first place. So mm -hmm. yeah. All courtesy I think it's of just Microsoft a fun overlap. licensing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I could talk licensing all day along. I think licensing is so much fun. You would have such a huge audience. Not. I, I, you know, here's the truth. And I love talking licensing. I'm scared to death that I'm going to say the wrong thing. So just take it with a grain of salt every day. <laughs> yeah. Not since spending time in Microsoft offices, watching three licensing experts come up with four solutions and ways to license the same solution. It's like, no way. You guys can't even get consistency on your own. I'm not going to talk licensing. You know, there is. Um, I'm going to give you guys a fun link. 
there is um, a licensing. Um, it's uh, getlicensingready.com. And so if you're um, in the Microsoft community and you want to know more about licensing and you want to take licensing training, there you go. They have training? <laughs> yes, they do. They used to have licensing boot camps too. And I um, actually had signed up for them and then they got canceled. <laughs> Also, that was one of the most uh, popular uh, uh, areas of sessions at the Inspire events, the partner events, partners trying to go in and understand the licensing. And just the joke that you have to have a PhD to understand Microsoft licensing and the fact that it changes every year. Um, something changes within this, but it's every year. Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah. I, I'd like to say maybe every month. Yeah, right. <laughs> So constant, I know what I constant. need to know out of this. Call Sharon. <laughs> I, I'll Google it for you. <laughs> you know, I would trust your Google results better than my own. Ask Chat GBT. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs>